extensive research of the French building style provided guidance in designing and planning the recreation, conforming to the Brooks drawing. The original building probably faced the river, but it was reversed to face the street in this reconstruction. To start the reconstruction, a concrete foundation was commercially built in the winter of 2001-2002 to assure permanence. The owners of a more than 100-year-old farmhouse near Fruitland, Missouri, donated the hardwood logs forming its walls. Volunteers harvested the wall logs and cut and shaped them for use. Timbers called sills were commercially cut from new cypress wood as that type of wood was readily available to Larimer along the riverbanks in 1797. These sills were fastened horizontally along the top of the foundation to form the bases for the walls. The old logs were then shaped for use by cutting square ends called tenons into the bottom of those logs. Square holes called mortises were cut into the top of the sills. The tenons were inserted vertically into the mortises and fastened in place by hand-cut wooden pegs driven through holes bored through both pieces. New cypress timbers were fastened into notches cut into the upper ends of the vertical logs. Angled log braces were likewise constructed. The two fireplaces and chimneys were built commercially in the spring of 2002. Volunteers hand cut the hundreds of round wooden pegs used to hold the many mortise and tenon joints and other types of joints. A special crane was built and used to raise the heavy cypress beams to form the tops of the walls and to install cypress ceiling joists and attic flooring. The building was mostly built without nails or other metal fasteners in the fashion of Lorimer's day, although the volunteers used chainsaws, power drills, and other modern tools. To meet modern building code requirements, some of the joints are reinforced by metal bolts and other modern bracing, but these items have been carefully concealed. The telephone company donated 104 long wooden poles for use in constructing the roof. During the winter of 2002 and 3, they were used to make 19 A-shaped trusses, 36 porch rafters, and cross braces for the roof. A local dry dock donated the use of a large crane to lift the roof's A-trusses into place and to set the porch rafters. In summer 2003, three local construction firms and the Carpenters Union provided the expert roofers to install the cedar shingles. The roof gables were closed in with cypress clapboards. The period windows, doors, and shutters were built from scratch by a group of local expert woodworkers out of special commercially cut poplar lumber. Continuing with the French-style construction, in summer of 2003, the spaces between the vertical logs were filled in by volunteers with small stones and bricks, cemented in place and covered over in stucco fashion. The south room was plastered on the inside, as was often done in some rooms in important buildings. Special shutters were constructed in 1797 style to protect all doors and windows. In French fashion, the inside and outside walls were whitewashed. Poplar tongue and groove flooring was commercially cut and then installed by volunteers to conceal the underlying concrete floor slab. A stockade fence was constructed along the rear of the site to represent what was usually a full fence around most homes on the frontier to keep out wild animals and hostile persons and to keep in domestic animals. To finish off the project, a mural on the flood wall was donated and painted depicting the scene which persons around the Red House may have seen in 1797 as they looked toward the Mississippi River. There's no kitchen in the reconstruction as the custom of the day for fine homes was to put that facility in its own separate nearby building, 
in order to reduce the damage in the event of a kitchen fire. There are no bathrooms inside the building following the customs of the period. The Red House with its stockade fence and mural was completed and opened to the public on November 23, 2003 for the reenactment of the 200th anniversary of the Meriwether Lewis visit in the year 1803.